Hey everybody, Matt here from Frank Mobile and the theme of, of today's show, and it's episode actually number one, is nothing more than just talking to good people about doing good business. I've got a great friend of mine here, a guy by the name of Chris Baradell, which I'll let him do the more of the introduction, but we just want to talk to Chris about literally doing some good business. So Chris, uh, who are you? What do you do? Mate, first and foremost, congratulations, podcast number one. Thanks, man. What well, cool we one. actually have to tell everybody is that this is actually the second <laughs> time, the second round of this first podcast, because the first one, Nick, our uh, audio <laughs> producer, didn't turn it on properly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, man, tell us, tell us what you get up to. I know you're, you're a man of many things. Yeah. But specifically, I'd like to go probably deep on, on your men's natural skincare yep. range and, and some of the origin stories, what you're seeing in the industry, yep. and where potentially the future of the, the game might yeah, go. Yeah, well, so Anok is the um, the men's skincare range that I have. Um, you know, we're still a, we're a very small business. We're still in what I like to call startup phase, even though it's been around for two years. Um, but yeah, with the, um, the idea kind of came from, it stemmed from a few different things. Like, I've always liked business. I've always liked startups. Um, I had bad skin, that traditional story, but where it sort of boiled down to a little bit more was I wanted to create a, a product for um, like a deodorizing product for my feet. So when I went snowboarding or when I went, you know, walking around in um, sports shoes, I wanted a deodorizing product for my feet. Um, Is there a female thing like that? For feet? Not sure. Probably. Mm. There's, there's something for everything mm. now. Um, but then as I was launching it, I realized that I couldn't launch a, a just a, a single product that was built around feet and sell it online. Um, so which stemmed me to like, okay, well, what do I need to launch in order to build brand credibility first? And that is a product that people are buying. And that was your face care stuff. Um, so then I went on this exploration of developing a, or looking at, you know, what's in the industry for men's skincare and finding out that, a, there was a whole lot of you know red tape and corporate jargon that just didn't make sense because they were replicating it off how females use their skincare, and also B, they were like full of all these chemicals which you couldn't explain the names of. Like you couldn't, you, if you had it in front of you, you couldn't read the name of what it was. And it's like you're putting this stuff on your face, um, you know. And and I just wasn't comfortable with that. So what I wanted to do was create a really natural skincare that you could read all the ingredients. It was, you know, it comes down to being simple, effective, and environmentally friendly. Um, and there were sort of my three checkpoints that I, I worked with. Um, and along that road, I realized that, you know, I can do this, but the ingredients contain palm oil. And I don't know if you know about palm oil, but, you know, deforestation in palm oil is crazy. Hold on, what, what is palm oil? So palm oil is one of the most used ingredients or, or plants, not only in skincare, but what we eat as well. Um, so it's um, palm oil in itself is fantastic. It's amazing. It does everything. It's this like multi-use product that you can put in anything. Like, like, a, bi- like a binding agent? Or if, no, it, li- it can literally be broken into so many different things. A binding agent, an active ingredient, um, a thickener, an additive... Um, they even um, turn it into preservative, so everything. Uh, yeah. So our food, yep. you'd use palm oil for like thickening, but also preservatives that need to yep. keep, to keep yep. shelf stable. And food. also to hold um, flavors, enhancers and oh, things yeah. like that, like chips, like they deep fried in that. So it may not even be listed as palm oil. And a lot of the time it's not listed as palm oil, but they've deep fried it in palm oil. And like, so it's, it's such a great product. However, it's all... Um, um, growing overseas in Asia so regulation on that is terrible if you look at the statistics in Asia alone I think it's the something like don't quote me on this but 300 football fields 300 football fields of forest so good forest gets destroyed every day every day yeah for palm oil plantations holy yeah so that's what I was just like this is and it, you can, you can, if you watch 300 football fields yeah. a day, far destroyed. like destroyed good, good for forest. them to put palm oil on yeah. top of, mm-hmm. and then is grown, yeah. cut down, and put into a lot of yeah, probably core products that we all use today. Yeah, wow. And not, and you, if you read, if you read an ingredients list, which I'm sure you do, you've never seen palm oil, no, never, because it's disguised. I didn't know what it was. Yeah, it's always disguised as something else because they morph it into so many different things, but it stems from this palm plant 
problem with this, like, you know, the def- deforestation in itself is terrible, but it's, you know, that is having like one of the biggest environmentally, environmental impacts on our, um, on our carbon, on our, on our carbon, carbon emissions, emissions area. It's but it's ridiculous. also killing all the animals, but nothing grow, nothing lives in palm oil plantations because it is just palm oil. Like it's not food for animals. It's, it's nothing. And it's not like, you know, you, you pick the palm oils, you, you they destroy the trees yeah. and then they regrow it. Yeah. So if you look at satellite images from all of these Asian countries, it's like, wow. Like, it's disturbing. Like, literally, like, 80% of their forests are gone, and it's just, like, rows of palm oil. Disturbing is a really good word. Yeah, it just doesn't look natural. What I've found, in any time I start um, getting a little bit educated on products, industries, or anything, particularly from an environmental point of view, when you start looking under the covers... It's actually quite hard not to to get quite fearful in your yeah. mindset because you realise how big an issue yeah. is and how how hard it might seem just for one person or one industry to try and start making yeah. a difference. Yeah, and that's it. And you know, I still use palm oil. Like, I'm not this palm oil like no advocate because it's almost impossible not to use palm oil. And it's like you know, I also have meat free Mondays. And, you know, people will be like, well, you can't, you know, you're, you're not a vegan, you're still eating meat, but I'm doing a little bit better than I was yesterday. And if I keep doing a little bit better than I was yesterday, habits start to change and, you know, I've changed my skincare, my face care to palm oil free, and now I buy palm oil free body wash. Mm. So it's slowly, slowly you add new ingredients and you get accustomed to that new lifestyle. And then, you know, the next thing to look at is, you know, okay, what foods contain palm oil? And what if I if I'm buying this every week that has palm oil? What can I substitute it with? And you just do one thing at a time. And it's like you know, you, you, if you if you have a hundred things on your plate and you improve, you know, each thing by one percent over the course of that, you've made a hundred percent improvement in your life. It's just doing simply it. by substituting. Exactly, and, not eliminating, and, actually yeah, substituting. substituting and becoming accustomed to that to that new buying pattern as well. Um, so when just that's a really good insight and yeah. one that I definitely didn't know of when so with a note and how all this ties back in did, when you first like you mentioned before that you would look at the the ingredients that would be on the back of a label of a cosmetics product had you always had that interest or where did that come from that it, it, it stems from like what you put in your mouth internal so like you know when you're when you go into the gym and you're on a diet plan you look at you know protein bars and you 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 measure up carbs um versus protein um versus fats and then you know from that you're like okay well if this has got this you know this tastes really sweet but it's got no sugar so you're like what's the ingredients and you're like oh it's you know stevia or you know even worse and alcohol, stevia and an alcohol <laughs> sugar and then you know that's all well and good sometimes like stevia is okay but and then you got all these alcohol sugars and then i know that now I'm like, my body gets upset with certain alcohol sugars. So I'm like, well, if I'm, if I'm conscious of what I'm putting in my mouth, I should also be conscious of what I'm putting on my body. Um, because the next thing was the deodorants contain aluminium. The aluminium is such a small particle that it gets absorbed into your bloodstream. So it was just like, like everything is, you know, affecting us in some way uh, or another. So it's about, you know, a process of eliminating of, you know, what you put into your body and what you put on your body and just trying to figure out how you can tweak little things here and there to be, a, a, you know, a healthier, better human all around. I remember the first time you told me about the aluminium thing mm. and I was like, bullshit aluminium that's it's a metal how can yeah. you how does this go into how does it absorb into a clear material it, that didn't make sense to me but yeah. then again being now more educated from yourself and into what's going into this year you can't help but look at everything and as soon you see it on every single almost every single uh, big chain cosmetics brand yeah there's aluminium yeah. in there and you don't actually realize until you start reading the fine print which yeah. again blew my mind similar thing natural holistic lifestyle but it's very hard to eliminate all yeah. of this junk coming into your body. Yeah. Wow. So when, after that point, so you started, you got an oak off the ground, you decided to make the, the product itself as natural as possible, palm oil free. Yeah. When an oak is today, what's some of the learnings in those early days? I'm trying to, because I imagine 
what are some of the learnings in the early days? Because what I can imagine is the costs of natural products in the early stages of startup getting something going, it's going to be higher going natural as opposed to aluminium or palm oil. How have you found that balance in getting to where you are now? Well, when I created the product, the, the cost of that product wasn't um, on my mind. I was like, well, I'm, I'm putting this stuff on my face and it's to serve a purpose. Um, I need it to be the best product possible. Um, so when I first launched it, like you know, the the cost of the cost of goods was through the roof. But I didn't care because I trusted it. I trusted the ingredients that I was putting on my face. I trusted the manufacturer, who was a local manufacturer in Sydney. They're all about palm oil free. They're all about plant based and natural. So you know, I needed to build that trust with the brand. So the cost of the product was not important to me. What my biggest hurdle was is that I have a product, but now I have an industry. I have an industry of men who, on a whole, I think it was like between the ages of 25 and 45, only 38% of that you know, group of men bought a skincare product. 38%? Yep. Yeah. Wow. Out of that group. But the interesting thing is, out of that 38%, more than 50% of them wore deodorant. So then when you oh, wow. when you break it down, okay, now we've got, you know, we, we, drew, we dropped that down to 15% of that 38%, and then, you know, out of that 15%, only 5% bought men's skincare for their face. And then probably only 1% bought online. And probably, <laughs> so, I was, so now I realise that I was talking about a niche, niche, niche about market a niche, segment. Which it doesn't seem like a niche because, you know, you have a skincare brand, but it's glorified by female skincare brands who are, are, are hummus because, you know, females just buy skincare. Bahamas or mammoths or behemoths? Behemoths. <laughs> we have a word, Bahamas. Yeah, so it's, it was about, you know, this female um, industry being so big, but the male industry being like minute. It was so small. It was tiny. So then I was like, okay, well, I need to first find my minimum, minimum viable audience, the people who are actually looking for my product. So, you know, put it out there on Google and, and put it out there on Facebook and create your Instagram pages and all this. And then, you know, quickly coming to the realization that this this audience is too small to build a business on. So then you, you kind of switch your mindset into, let's not try to convert people, let's try to convince them. And it, it's still a process. Mm. Um, the men's skincare industry in Australia is growing. Mm. It's significantly growing, um, but it's you know it's changing patterns, changing buying behaviours, um, and and you know with more businesses or more competitors coming into the market, it's trying to steal back what you've lost as well, yeah. and trying to steal some of theirs. So yeah. it's a, it's an interesting ball game of you know where where do you go? Where do you think the growth is coming from? Is it because I have noticed a lot of bigger brands now coming into yeah. like the well-established legacy yeah. brands, Swiss, you yeah. know, your L'Oreal's, but obviously yeah. you're female based, but is that growth being driven by bigger organizations seeing consumer demand around having a more natural based well, those product big in their organizations, driving? Or? You know, a lot of them aren't natural. A lot of yeah. them, um, a lot of them aren't even plant. I mean, palm oil free. Sukun's not even palm oil free. And that's one of the biggest ones out there at the moment. Um, it's the competition is good because it's it's driving awareness to men needing skincare. So then now I've got a, a bigger audience who know that you know maybe I should use skincare. So now it's about educating them on um, skincare manufacturing practices to hopefully you know find my few men in that group who care about the environment care about putting natural products on their face um, and you know I would like to think my products are super simple simpler than a lot of the other brands who have 10 different products I have four mm. and you use them in one two three four steps so it's yeah I, I don't mind the competition because it's bringing up the industry as a whole what's something you're really proud of with an oak whether it be people planet it's been getting palm, to here it's being palm oil free and you know it's it's a small business all the all the ingredients are from local suppliers um, my manufacturer is a local company. I use, I try to use local everything for everything. Yeah. So it's about keeping it Australian based um, and going back to the core fundamentals of simple, um, effective, and ethical. Yeah. Yeah. What if I was looking to buy a skincare, not having come into the game at all, and not understanding, yeah. not understanding the 
how not as understand the ingredients list that's going into some of these products first time user what would you be advising people to do before buying that first product and using that first product well with skincare and having you know billions of people in the world you, you can't make something that everyone's going to like and if the people who like it excellent they'll love it the people who don't like it fantastic you've also got an audience of people who could be allergic because it's i've got nut products in there so it could be allergic to some of the oils because you know macadamia nuts and avocados um, i've got a natural products in there so you can be allergic so do your research first and you should be like you would putting food in your in your mouth you should be also doing your research on what you put on your face mm. so first and foremost do your research um, and make sure um, you know you go in there with a, a why well, why am I wanting to buy skincare what's the what's the idea here is it for you know anti-aging to remove blackheads to clear redness on the face uh, or are you just doing it because people think that you should be using skincare um, so, you know, go in there, educated, know your why, and then find the product that, mm. that fits that. I know we're a little bit short on time, and I wasn't going to ask this question, but it's just popped in my mind because how important it is. You're saying that you're actually putting on your face. It's mm. a delicate part of, of the human body. How have you gone about building trust, which I imagine is such a key thing for your business? How have you gone about building trust in your community? Having a good product and getting reviews getting feedback mm. that's it simple as that yeah. easy cool man well appreciate the time I truly believe that with education becomes power and the more we can do have conversations like this the more we can be exposed to different industries and understand what's going in behind the scenes the more education and power that can become I love what you're doing I think waking up with a mission that's above just trying to make money but actually do something for yourself is, is really cool and I'll take my hat off to you that you've got it to this point. And until next time, everybody, unless Chris, you got anything else to share? Yeah, we'll, uh, if you want go. any skincare. Yeah, of course. Get on to a shameless night. plug. If you're looking for the best skincare, I personally use it. It's got a charcoal base, so it actually looks pretty cool when you're, when you're putting it on. My, my missus, she actually probably even uses it more than me, so it's quite... Um, both, uh, how would you say it, male and female yep. friendly. So if you're looking for a really good skincare, I'll definitely recommend check out anoke, anoke.com.au. Yep. And until next time, everybody, have a good day.